those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in His divine plan and find strength in His presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with Him. Remain blessed as you listen. The last key that helps people to make spiritual progress in this kingdom is service. And I'll stop here. Service. Service. And there are two dimensions to this service. Number one, service in the house of God. And number two, the service of a witness. Don't forget what I taught you tonight. The forces and the keys that guide us to make spiritual progress. Number one, the ministry of prayer. Number two, the ministry of the word. Number three, discipleship. Number four, service. There are certain levels of growth you cannot attain until and unless you are actively in service. There are times you go to use a restroom and they put a big, um, uh, what they call that thing, there's like a sign there out of service that means don't bother coming here it is not working some of us are carrying this all around our lives out of service both to God and to men and so everybody avoids you the same way we avoid that restroom and you are wondering come to me but there's something in you saying out of service I am not a worker in the house of God I am not a witness revealing Christ what are you then But I've seen certain filling stations that have queues and you see beautiful cars queuing there. You are wondering, don't these people have anything else to do? They are patient because those stations are so in service. Sometimes late into the night, people still wait. May you be like that in the name of Jesus Christ, that nations will come to seek the hand of God upon you. And let me tell you, there are many of you, people will inconvenience themselves with joy and say, we have discerned that the hand of God is upon you. We cannot but look to your direction. I'm prophesying to someone, in the name of my God and the one who lifts men, everybody who needs to find you and to be a blessing through your life and to bless you through their life, in Jesus name may your service attract them to you please sit down please sit down there are many of you who have been in this ministry for a very long time Exodus 23 25 is a deep mystery that God taught me and I've had the privilege and the honor of teaching our workers if you serve God just because the pastor and his wife are say your tribesmen or they are sad because they know you and there's no way you can run away you can't lie that you are walking you are staying in their house or some kind of flimsy excuse you must serve God by revelation it says and ye shall serve the Lord thy God and he shall bless it's a covenant this is called the covenant of service you shall serve the Lord and he shall bless service does not mean coming to church service means making activities in the house of God work so just because you came you are a congregant respectfully speaking those who are serving are those who made sure this pulpit was in place that they came early in the morning making sure that everything is in place can I tell you God rewards service my God I don't know which one my own my God rewards service I'm telling you this and there are some of you it looks like you have served for a long time I said it in the mainland yesterday watch out the reward that is coming there is a name that God is called in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 that he that cometh unto God must believe that he exists and then that he is the rewarder when God comes to you he gives you more than a salary he can give you he can give you a man's prayer point as a gift he can carry the whole of a man's destiny and literally give it to you 
it pays to serve Jesus. Hallelujah. Say service. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Very quickly. It says, I'd rather be for a day in your court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Who is speaking here? King David. Please do not join people who think that the house of God is just a place that turns people to slaves. Oh, but you are walking. Keep doing that. You will never get a husband the way you are all in the... Which God are you talking about now? people feel stupid for being committed in church and we open up ourselves to maybe well-meaning but ignorant people who bring in philosophies and deflate your passion if you have been in this house for a while and you've not served obtained grace from god you are missing out on something there is a level of growth there are people whose prayer lives became strong because of their departmental prayers there are those who even discovered their call through service they never knew they were called Stephen thought he was in the welfare department yet there was a mighty mighty man of God in him there are things you will never find until you serve in the place of service you learn accountability you learn organization it's not just spirituality in the place of service you will meet with strategic people there are those who found their spouses in the place of service you were cleaning a chair you did not know that you were cleaning nonsense out of your destiny because it was your husband or your wife that was going to sit on it now that is his hey, hey, hold on that is not the reason why you should serve however it can be a reason as you serve There are people who found strategic destiny helpers while serving. They were so early cleaning the church and God directed a billionaire to come. Where is your pastor? He says, it's not around. He said, who are you? Well, I'm this and that and that. Why are you? You look like you're a nice person walking. Do you have a job? No, sir. How many years? Ten years. No job? Can you become the African director of this company? And it's as if he want to scam you. You want to run away? And he said, no, no. It's what the blessing of the Lord can do. I know it sounds funny, but there are people who have what I'm telling you as a testimony. May you be the next one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this. Years ago, I went to preach in Mubi. And the man who was driving me, they had been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for a long time. Very sincere, nice man. And he was driving me. Usually I pray for the people who are within close proximity I make sure I speak over them and while he was driving me I started hearing the cry of babies I didn't know I didn't know the man from anywhere I said what is this and later I got to find out and I told him you have driven me except this car did not move that the, an end comes to this demonic thing whatever siege and that was the end of it Don't downplay what God can do through service. Service in the house of God. And then all of us should be in service as witnesses. Acts chapter 1 and 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. And with great power gave witness of the apostles of the resurrection and great grace was upon them with great power they gave witness a witness is a validator that means your assignment is to make Jesus known we call it in our ministry Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified that that is the assignment you are not in service if Jesus is not being revealed to your life just because money is being revealed through your life does not mean you are in service except if that money reveals Jesus everything must end up revealing Jesus and glorifying him otherwise you are not in service let me show you one last scripture have I wasted your time tonight Micah chapter 3 from verse 16 to 18 Malachi my apologies Malachi 
chapter 3 please give it to us from verse 16 blessed be the name of the Lord Malachi 3 it says and they that feared the Lord and the Lord hearkened and all of that verse verse um, verse 17 now we're reading to 18 and they shall be mine said the Lord in that day when I make up my jewels I will spare them as a man spared his own son that not just his own son there is exemption in service that when certain plagues are coming upon men the son that serves there are many sons but the one that serves I will spare them now verse 18 then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth God and him that serveth not that means there are things God does in the life of a man that you say we are all Christians but what is the difference one is in service one is out of service I choose to be in service I choose to be in service more than the word servant is not supposed to be an insult if you understand what it means a servant is not a slave a servant is one who willfully has submitted himself to serve the king and this God that we serve is benevolent you can serve your way to favor you can serve your way to breakthrough. Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. The next prophet was supposed to come out of the sons of the prophets. But he served his way into a double portion of that anointing. If God has given you the privilege to serve in this house, please reject complaining. Apostle, you don't know the problems I have. It's not only you. Every church, everyone, including our ministry, has it. There are things that are common to men. It should be too small a reason for you to keep complaining and grumbling. I choose not to be offended this year. I make up my mind that I will serve. They may step on my toes. I may sincerely step on the toes of others. But all be it, the truth is that we desire that Jesus be revealed. That Jesus be glorified. And you will see God lifting you. You will begin to flourish like the palm tree and like that cedar that is in Lebanon. There is no going down for you.